How are you? Good. How are you, Johnny? Yeah, I haven't seen you in a little while. How, I guess, first and foremost, how is things and how are you keeping? I'm keeping well. Things are going fine. Real busy at this moment of the semester. Real busy. So people yeah. will definitely want to know a little bit more as to what real busy means, because I can see a couple of guests <laughs> joining us. So we'll definitely get into that. But I guess maybe to touch on the more recent times, how they be, how have they been, generally speaking, I guess, going a little bit more online and throughout the summer and the COVID period? How have they been for you? Um, it was uh, different to to say the least, and um, it was difficult at the start. You know, getting a hang of um, st- not seeing your teacher writing write writing it on the board and stuff. So it was very difficult at the start. And then there were times when the Zoom links were not up to date, and then we were a little bit lost. But um, then we got a hang of it, and then it was all fine. The yeah. online experience as a whole, I think we'll get into this anyway a little bit later, but as a whole, have you enjoyed it? Did it surprise you in any way or what did surprise you about the online or the hybrid learning experience so far? Um, it didn't. Uh, what surprised me was that like how quickly we adapted to it, to be honest. Um, though we were accustomed to, you know, the traditional way of teaching, going into the class and all that. But like mm-hmm. when time came, we were pretty quick and we like, you know um it was easier by the time how does something like that work i again we'll talk about this all this probably in detail but for those that are tuning in how do you actually get your links i know there's a loop platform how does the lecturer send them i guess, I guess mechanically how does it actually feel and look for the person that's logging in or the student that's logging in to speak to lecturers and speak to classmates um so it's like it's pretty um, methodical. So you have like the uh, lecture obviously sends you the links for each lecture a day earlier or in the morning. And um, they send you the Zoom link and you just uh, click on it and enter the class. And yeah, there you go. And um, so for recurring classes, of course, you can add them to the calendar and then you have them as the reminder there. So that's, that's pretty handy too if you somehow lose the link in the emails that you get. It uh, seems pretty straightforward. I actually, yeah, I, I had a bit of experience with it myself, just finished my own master's, part-time master's in DCU. So yeah. I, I do have a bit of an experience with it, but I think to your point of how how seamless, if, if I'm allowed to say that, um, the transition was pretty much from, you know, overnight going from yeah. a, a physical presence um, and we're with each other to now we have to adapt. And I think that's um, a lot to be said for the teaching um, and learning staff in particular in the university. Anyway, um, that, that's one part of it. So I see a few people are watching us here um, live and just a reminder, and I'll just remind people again, that there's a Q&A function. I know Vasundra is one of our dedicated student ambassador team. So she's well used to answering questions as is as is uh, her brother as well, Bartendu, um, a, a part of the, the team. So um, the, the accounting and finance, actually, you know what? We'll talk a little bit about coming to DCU, if you don't mind, as in choosing yeah. DCU, um, course program and I know you have your own journey around that so you might just fill people in on maybe coming to DCU and then maybe how you arrived currently where you are at the moment in, in accounting and finance. Right so I like every uh, leaving third student, sixth year student does I had my uh, courses to choose from and DCU was one of one of the choices and accounting and finance and um, simply because I did both accounting and business um, for leaving cert and I, I did higher level maths too um, so yeah like I was kind of keen to understand how where finance takes me and then just a little bit a, a touch of accounting in it so that I can become a chartered accountant at the end of the three years um, so yeah and um, choosing DCU wasn't hard actually just like you said my brother is in DCU too so it was like a familiar place to me um, and it was it was it is far from my home but um that's okay like the transport is pretty pretty um frequent so it's not too bad either can you talk to me a little bit because we spoke to louise mclaren in last week who actually came comes down or came down from belfast and she just i think her wording was as soon as she arrived in the gate it felt like home or something clicked can you can you speak to that as to why dcu and again i know bartender your brother is here so maybe that helps or does probably have an influence in some way but anything else as to what struck you first about the campuses or the university or the people or what came to mind initially for you choosing DCU? 
Oh yeah, I remember walking in through you know the interfaith center and entrance towards the Henry Grattan building, and um, there was like I was actually lost on the Glasnevin campus a little bit because um, the map and the letters. I was like, where do I have to go? And they were, they were just how I was um, helping people come in last year. And um, there were people there who were very helpful, and I went up to one of them, and they were like, oh yeah, they're. they're there's where you have to go. And even my first lecture, um, like everybody was so nice and so helpful. Yeah, so it was, it was actually, it was a very friendly environment. I, I was nervous, but I wasn't scared to ask for help. That, that's, all, that's always, um, a, that's a good way to put it, but it's always something that comes back because, and you'll know this as I have when I came to do an undergrad in DCU, there's obviously three or 4,000 people that are coming in. It's very similar. Yeah. They're a bit nervous, a bit anxious, don't know where to go, don't know how to read the the letters on the uh, the map. And by the way, if people are wondering what letters on the map means, it's basically each building has a, a letter associated to it. Um, and that's kind of how you navigate your way around. So Initially, it's a uh, it's different, but it doesn't take too long. So the people was something that stood out. People, yeah. people, when you say were friendly and open, um, is there? I mean, I'm we'll probably getting into a little bit later on about outside the classroom and how people can support you and help you academically and clubs and societies and different things. But people is always something that is not the first thing out of somebody's mouth about DCU, but it's not too far off being the first thing. Mm -hmm. Anything else around the people in general? I mean, you've already mentioned lecturers and how supportive and helpful they were and how people were helpful for you coming in. Anything else on the people that comes to mind? Again, just an open thought or an open question. Um, I think um, everybody, like I remember going to the clubs and talks there um, and like obviously coming in as first years, you have you have very little idea of what it is about, though it is very well promoted around the university. And then there, there's like, many many um clubs and cl clubs and societies so then you you go up and you just ask them and they are so nice to explain it to you like what this society is about what how does it how do we go about things what are the events that they are planning and all so it was like obviously study is important when you come to college but it's equally important to get involved in like you know the extracurricular and after after lectures activities so it was it was good fun to know that yeah um, you know, and they were there to explain like what they felt as first years when they came in. So it felt like there was a there was the link of familiarity there. Yeah, that that personal touch, um, yeah, personalization probably is something that that springs to mind and comes up often. So I, I do want to lay out the course because I know there's people interested in in obviously the course program. So I want to do that in a moment, and then I want to talk a little bit around outside the classroom, club and societies, being a student ambassador. And so on but just to remind us again so you're commuting and um, whereabouts you're coming from and people that are probably in a similar or maybe in a similar boat how are you finding that experience so i come uh, from lucan and mm -hmm. um, yeah and i take the train um and then i take a bus from Drumcondra to uh, glasnevin um it's nearly hour and a half so like um nine o'clock lectures where that means that i have to be out of the house at 20 past seven to get a train at half past seven. And that does mean that I get into college early, but um, yeah, so that is that is a bit of a commute, uh, hour and a half in the morning and hour and a half in the evening. Um, but the frequency is good, so it's not very hard. The, the commute is, and I, I will get on, for those that are watching, I promise I'll talk about, the, we'll talk about the course now in a second, but for some people that might be listening and watching this back often have that fear of, oh, I live um, you know, far away and I'm just on the edge of commuting versus maybe living on campus, but I can't afford or whatever it might be. And mm -hmm. so it's good to hear, I guess, look, it is and it takes time and public transport, no matter what way you do it. However, in saying that, I'm sure there's opportunities to do work or listen to podcasts or to do different things on the way in or out. Would you have any experience there as to what you do to fill your time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like the train journey is like 25 minutes. Um, so I would always have like a book book with me to read or like I'd listen to music or I'd listen to, you know, any of the lectures that I have to go over. That was also one of the things as the semester goes on, there are tests and assignments coming up. So you want to look over that. So that's a very good time to just look over your notes and have a bit of time or just actually like if you're really tired, you can actually sleep on the train. It's very comfortable. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's talk about the course. Um, yeah. So try give us a sense of, I guess, a few things. And you're well used to this talking as a student ambassador, speaking to many prospective students. But the course, what it's all about, how many years, the types of modules, and we'll talk for the next few minutes around the course. By the way, if you have any questions, just a reminder, as we're talking, pop them in here. It's anonymous. I can ask for Sundra and we can get to it and we can answer your questions live if you're watching this live. So uh, give us a sense of the course, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so this is a three-year course. Um, so the first year is pretty um, general, so to say. Um, you know, you have your uh, financial accounting modules, you have your management accounting modules, you have a bit of economics, both macro and microeconomics, and you have a bit of law in it as well, and one module, which is a math module. Um, it's not too hard. I know maths can put people off, but um, it's not very hard. Um, it's doable. So all you like, it's an extension to what we learn at leaving cert level. So like you'd learn, obviously there are a few new things, but not very hard. And um, a lot of our modules are like, you know, uh, continuous assessments. Like, so we don't have many exams, like for January, we only have one, one exam, the rest of them are in May. So that's good. Like, you know, you get a nice Christmas holiday, but, um, but that's the thing. Um, and then, of course, um, you have uh, you have second year, you have taxation, you have other uh, financial maths is also one of them if you want to specialize in that. And then third year consists of like purely of um, a lot of choices as well. You can choose language, French, German, Spanish, and you know you can do them throughout the three years. Um, yeah, so that's one. And then in year three, of course, uh, you have your mind uh, fully set as to if you would like to be a chartered accountant at the end at the end of the year, or um, you would like to go into banking or finance or something like that. And um, you can specialize in each one of them. And uh, what this course offers is, of course, as an undergraduate, you get exemption from the CAP one exams which is like one of the two exams that you have to do to become a chartered accountant. And then if you go on to do masters, then you get an exemption from CAP2. And then all you have to do is sit the FAEs and then you're a chartered accountant. And this course, of course, this course is three years as opposed to lots of DC degrees are four years. Yeah. So uh, with that, a couple of kind of quick fire ones which people kind of tend to ask, class sizes? Um some of the modules like economics it's also it's not just accounting and finance who are doing it there's like amps and aviation management students as well so it is a pretty pretty big class so for like economic general modules it's like around 200 210 people and then things like say accounting uh, accounting modules it's like 80 odd people yeah no go on uh, yeah not very large classes for the core modules for accounting and finance and you mentioned already then kind of your January kind of exams. Give us a sense of that, how the workload is spread. So, and we were mentioned just at the start, you're busy and this is a busy time come to Christmas, plenty of assignments. Give yeah. the people that are listening a sense. And I know this will differ year to year, but a sense of how the, the I guess, subjects and modules are spread out on assignments versus, I guess, end of semester exams. Um, yeah, so uh, you only have like um, a lot of the modules this year are continuous assessments. Like I, I have seven modules and four of them are continuous assessments. So that means that you will get like, you know, two weeks to complete your assignments. You can have a think about it. And obviously there's a lot of resources there to help you out. And then exams um, for the exam. So say for like, for example, the maths module, you know, you have lectures every week. And that means like for every hour you have say five questions to do. So, you know, in a week you have 10 questions to do. And if you keep up on, like it's my personal experience, if you keep up on, keep on top of that, you'd have no issues, you know, sitting a January exam and actually passing it like fair, fair bit, you can do that. Now, if you lag behind the advantage of Christmas holidays is that you can catch up on that. <laughs> we have our exams after Christmas, so it's a good time to catch up. But that means you have to study the entire Christmas break. Yeah, I always remember that and looking back at my own undergraduate that sometimes um, to, 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 I use the Christmas holidays to my advantage, should I say. So yeah. the, the, so just another one that kind of comes up is um, 
I, I kind of like maths and I'm strong enough or, you know, I'm not too bad in that area, but I'm a little bit nervous that what if I do fall behind? What about the support in terms of if you need extra support or tutorials and that type of thing? What, what support is on offer for those that might find themselves in that situation? Yeah, so um, we have weekly tutorials is one of them and you have tutor like designated one hour tutorials. So the tutor there is to help you out. You have any questions, you just um, tell them, ask them, and they explain it to you. Um, what is better going into tutorials is that you have attempted them so that you have some sort of a start to it. And then the tutor can just polish those, under, polish that understanding for you. Um, and then of course we have the maths learning se um, center in the library where you can drop in any time of the day and the tutors can just help you out with any sort of question. Yeah, so, uh, and even the lecture, you know, like you can email them anytime and they'll get back to you um, helping you out. The, the, I hope we're covering some of the questions that people have, but if we're not and you want to ask a question again, just a reminder, there's a Q&A function on your screen if you're watching this live and Basundra, I know would be glad to get to anything uh, specific that people want to ask. And I won't read out your name, so don't worry too much about that. Um, so what, if anything, surprised you about the, the course so far anyway? Um, the assignments. Um, you know, um, it, it's a different different um, sort of thing to approach when you come from school. You know, you're, you're, um, you have all the material just there, you know, like you just have to translate it into an essay or something like that. But here you have to do a bit of research, you know, you have to read, you have to analyze um, your, the work that you've just read and put it into your own words and then, you know, put uh, like uh, submit it. So that was something that was rather hard to get a hang of at the start. You know, the first assignment I got, I was like, there is so much to read. And how do I translate all that information into a thousand word essay? And sometimes the, even the word come gets to you. You know, you're like, how am I gonna get it to touch a thousand words? It's gonna be difficult. So though like doing search students are pretty used to writing long essays for English and all, but yeah, sometimes it can be a little tough to get a hang of a word count as well. What about, as a question that came in, I'll ask that in a moment. Thank you for that. What about the breakdown between individual assignments versus versus group assignments? Um, what, what would be in each category or, or maybe it's all in one? Um, so there are a few, uh, like there's a module called the life module. It's a continuous assessment and it's broken down into both individual assignments and group assignments. So you, I think there are, there are two group assignments and then there are um, three which are individual assignments. Um, and uh, it's actually pretty good, uh, particularly in this year when you don't, when you have not met people on campus and you don't know what your class looks like. It's pretty good to have group assignments so that you, know, you can get together and get to know each other and work on something which is, which, is, which has to be submitted. So everyone has to chip in. The a question that came in, thank you for it. Uh, just a reminder to keep them coming if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite modules so far, if any? Um, management accounting and uh, maths. Yeah, I'd say maths and financial accounting as well, actually. Yeah. So all three of them. Another question that came in, uh, are there a lot of essays in the course? Um, yeah, I, not not very many, but um, I'd say a good amount. Yeah, like I, I've written three essays by now. So this is week 10 and no, week nine. Um, so three essays, so not too bad. So put that into context. So it's a 10 week semester. This is week nine. So in total, yeah. you, you've, you've done three and will you have one or two more before kind of the end of semester? Yeah, I have one more for psychology, but we've had that since, you know, the start of the course. So like since week one, we've been we've been told that you have to write a reflective essay by the end of the semester. So, you know, you have plenty, you have 10 weeks to write that or maybe like 11 weeks because we have to submit it on like 21st of December. So that's another week. So like. I'd say that the workload is pretty distributed. You know, you'd never find yourself uh, submitting an essay on Monday, and a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. You'll never find yourself doing that. 
Uh, thanks for all these questions. Another one that came in was, could you give an example of like a type of essay that you would have to write or a type of assignment, and what would that what what would the essay be effectively? Oh yeah. Um, so I so again with the life module because it's the most interactive one. So I'll give you an example of that. We had to attend um, these workshops, you know, live events, um, and I attended one. And what we had to do was we had to reflect on the event that we attended but there were specific questions that we had to answer so obviously the the norm, like the very basic ones being like what were, why did we choose that event and uh, and then we had to relate it back to what we had studied you know um, so we were focusing on entrepreneurship for example in in the in that particular week so uh, we were asked to link it back to what we had studied about entrepreneurship and uh, how did that uh, live event, you know, um, polished our understanding of of that. So it's, I think it's a link between, you know, what, the theory and the pra practical uh, world. So that's pretty engaging, yeah. So that would be one of those essays that you would write. Thank you for that insight. And thanks for the person that asked that question. Lots of questions coming in. I'm conscious these are only like 30 minutes and we've loads to get through. So um, thank you for the question. Is maths a big part of the course? You spoke about it already, but is it a big part overall? Um, no, just one semester. Um, just the first semester you have to do that and you're done in January. Short and sweet. Um, yeah. <laughs> so if there is any other questions, keep them coming in because I do want to just spend literally a couple of minutes on outside the classroom because as Vasundra already said, when she would have came to DCU as as she had has done so lots of times since supported people outside the classroom, clubs and societies, you're currently a student ambassador. Can you try to give people a sense of, I guess, outside the classroom, what it looks like for you and any benefits or any, um, I guess, opportunities you've gotten outside of the classroom? Uh, plenty to begin with and uh, there is a club or a society on anything you can think of you know there's a tea tea society there's a harry potter society so anything that interests you if you're you know really sporty there's a cricket society which i did not think um uh, was um in ireland considering the weather but it is um there's a badminton society and like you name it and there is one right um and it, it also helps you if you want to become a student ambassador in second year. It, it plays a huge role in that. Um, and like I, I've been not very active this year, but um, pretty active with you know the events that go on in um, in the U, for example, the student center. Um, yeah, there's something going on every single week, and then there's the. Um, lots of events now, I can't think of them, but um, um, I was part of the Chinese society, for example, and I was supposed to go to China as a volunteer teacher to teach English, and then um, the pandemic happened, but yeah, so that was that was something that I was involved in and really excited to go there. The outside the classroom experience, it's a hard one, and for those that are familiar with DCU, you might have a, a decent sense of what uh, Vasundra is speaking about but if you're unfamiliar effectively there's 100 what 140 plus clubs and societies um whatever you're interested in join it if you're not interested in it at the time and you want to try it try it out but I guess the main thing is in terms of the outcome would be and Vasundra you can speak to this more than I can in terms of recent experiences but is that how much it accelerates your overall holistic development so yes you're getting your world-class accounting and finance degree over here but then over on the other side you're getting your social exposure and experiences etc in terms of those opportunities and experiences that have come to you so far and hopefully plenty more still to come anything stand out or anything in terms of skills you've learned or something that jumps to mind or a time even that was particularly important for you i think um like particularly uh, as student ambassadors on open days you know, like I remember the first ever open day that I did, um, I was asked to present my course. And I was like, but this is the first time that I'm ever doing it. And um, so like, I'm not a very um, confident public speaker. I make my way through it. But I think being a student ambassador has sort of helped me get over that stage fright that is there and just like going up and talking to people. I would never do that as a school student. I would never just go up to someone and be like, do you need some help? But I, I do that as a student ambassador because that's my job, you know, and just like also meeting people. Like I've met some 
third and fourth year students and like really enjoyed my time as a, uh, at open days or like, you know, higher options and even working the orientation week that I was, it was a, it was a good time. Well, well, two things, because I've run out of time rapidly, but number one, you're an extremely valued member of the student ambassador team, uh, roughly about 50 people for those that don't have a, an awareness of what a student ambassador does, but essentially they're employed by the university, they're staff members of the university while they're doing their degree, and they, as Vasundra rightly said, help us out at open days, they go to careers events, they talk to students, they do blogs, they do live conversations, social media takeovers, they pretty much do uh, what uh, my job is supposed to be doing, but they do it a little bit better than I, than I and my colleagues can. Um, so, that, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, again, I don't know if you're the first, maybe not, but brother and sister, Bartendu and yourself are both student ambassadors. So again, there's a bit of a, a family competition going on there. So we're, we're nearly out of time. And the question I kind of always ask people that as we're parting or as we're leaving is, um, favorite thing so far, what stands out? One thing, if you could put it down to one thing in particular so far, anything stand out? Uh, favorite thing in DCU is I think just sitting with my friends um, in the U and having a chat and just like it, it's it's a place where time can go by really really quickly that's my favorite thing and um, what stands out to me is um, just how familiar DCU can become you know you will by the end of first year you'll love spending time in the light whether it's the library whether it's the student center or even in your lecture at times you know it, it's just like it becomes a home away from home um i don't and i won't attempt to try and put a better um finish on, on our conversation because that probably it captured it captures it beautifully and just to finish on that the u is the student center located on our glass Devon campus for those not familiar and just so you know there's a there's three different academic campuses um that that dcu has so depending on the course that you're in would um largely dictate where you spend your time although all of our campuses are open to all of our students so um really just a drop in the ocean i do know, i do know that and i know you have plenty more that you could have told our guests here today and those watching back live but really just to thank you for your time and your insights as always it's always a pleasure and you're always very very good to people that are uh, where you were a couple of years ago so thank you thank you so much johnny it was a pleasure thanks for so much and we'll speak to you hopefully physically and together really really soon yeah thanks, thank john. you we'll chat soon